the professor of Pontifical Gregorian University, has, uh, Yvonne Donna Schlockbitten, has started her presentation, Gordinus Aesthetics, in a special research project, Understanding the Science of Our Times, Philosophical and Theological Perspectives, organized by the Council for Research in Values and Philosophy in Washington, D.C., with a question, what do these photos have in common? Is it as always the case that the application of innovative technologies to the cultural heritage of the church is for a better encounter with the human person? In the beginning of the 20th century, was um, uh, common to reflect on the industry and new technologies which have invaded in the nature in the middle of the 19th century. The main question was what is the role of the man in these innovations? This linking question had united the intellectuals and the artists, as for example, the religious philosopher Romano Guardini and the architect Rudolf Schwartz. Uh, they were in clear dialogue have ref reflected much was that of the path that technology and man with it should take. The art for Guardini uh, is, um, is the main, um, has a main role in his theological approach. It's quite, um, for hi him is art is innovative. And uh, this panel is uh, of a conference is called how Christianity could influence art, but I should say that how art in this my presentation could, could influence Christian thought. And uh, uh, for Guardini art was a promise. Uh, so in this presentation, I want to unite Guardini's reflections on the innovative technology in the book, Letters from Lake Como, his approach, um, on the art and the innovative technologies. And uh, um, innovative technologies on um, um, used in nowadays for the cultural heritage as 3D virtual reality, augmented reality, 360 degrees virtual reality, and the metaverse. It seems that innovative technologies and the cultural heritage are two different, not interacting fields. Uh, it is a challenge. Uh, is the technology could help us to know better the art or do we know more about, about the technology through that? that kind? The transdisciplinary scene of Romano Guardini starts from um, the letting oneself be looked at and thus alluding to a relationship amongst aesthetic experience, spiritual experience and theology in exercising the sincerity of the look called Weltanschau, a contemplative knowledge next to the knowledge of the theory and the knowledge of experience. The process of the truthfulness of the look happens in the integrity of three ways of knowing, the knowledge of the theory, the knowledge of experience, and the knowledge of the contemplation. Pope Francis, in his address to participants in the conference sponsored by the Romano Guardini Stiftung in 2015, said, I am certain that Guardini is a thinker who has much to say to people of our time and not only to Christians, end quote. On uh, 2021, the Eternal World uh, Television Network original docudrama takes Guardini's writings and relates them to our new digital culture in the film of 30 minutes duration called The Prophet of the Lake, Father Romano Guardini on Technology and Culture. In the film, um, we find how we can apply Guardini's insights to our modern lives. In the film, the director of, of undergrad studies at the McGrath Institute for Church Life, Leonard De Lorenzo, says that Guardini, um, quote, Guardini gives us an answer to the problem of technologies through the liturgy. And he does not mean that the liturgy communicates what the church teach, teach and uh, believes. There are also formative and or immediate moments that teach us what does it mean to be a human being end quote. So he interprets this in that way. The deepest way of engagement and encounter would never come immediately, 
as we're wrestling with and struggle through that challenge of waiting. The waiting is the main criterion of their liturgy and the critics for the technologies. In mid, in, in mid 1920s, the uh, um, religious uh, philosopher Romano Guardini writes the series of letters during his holidays time in Italy. When he was visiting his mother in Varenna and at that period was working with the youth movement Quickborn in the castle of uh, Rothenfels in Germany, which uh, was restored by the architect Rudolf Schwarz. And um, Guardini's experience with the youth movement was inseparable from his attitude on technology. Quote, it is intrinsic to the gen uh, genuine youth movement to be unsettled to the core by the picture that emerged from the depth depths of the historical. The youth movement has opposed the mechanization, rationalization, and individualization of the second half of the 19th century. It sought organic life fellowship and inner creativity. The authentic youth movement chose technology. A true youth movement is not romantic restoration of the past, but a living adumbration of what is coming. The, but the genuine demand for authenticity, simplicity, stubbornness, brotherliness are quite compatible with what is being created in modern manufacturing and industry." End quote. Guardini in his letters from the lake coma describe the technologies in this way, quote, the remoteness from immediate vitality, what means we take a piece of nature and with it we move out of a sphere of the most immediate reality into another sphere. In this sphere, things are mediated by science and substitutes. We are not longer in the first living relation to corporeal things and people, we are in an abstract form in the artificial world. It is rationally understood power of nature, which works through the machine, a tool. This will, this intellectuality is governed by a human attitude." End quote. As an example of the organic unification um, between the human being and the technology, for Guardini could be the architecture. Um, quote, I see buildings in which technology has been given true form. This form has not been imposed from outside, but it is of the same origin as the technological image itself. This form gives evidence of something greater, namely that the technological means has been brought into relation to our vital feelings." End quote. Guardini gives the arguments for the importance of the attitude at the technology, which is destructive because it's not under human control. Quote, mastering such raw materials and forces, collecting, shaping, and relating them, and thus creating the world culture is something that those who are oriented to the old world cannot do, end quote. The main point of Guardini is that without the living culture, a new human attitude at the age, which is lost and everybody is looking back to the old, it is impossible to deal with the task. That is why the Shrine of Shuva has chosen the slogan Living Pilgrimage, which is based on the experience of contemporary culture, the youth spirituality, and the tradition of the church. It is coming from inside to answer the outside cultural necessity, in which is included the lack of living cultures, uh, cultures cooperation within innovative technologies. What is going in the world is our task to deal with it. Living means this answering to the necessity of nowadays pilgrimage. Living does not mean to repeat what was in all times and to make a revival, but to give a life to all what the world proposed, to understand what currently lack of our response. Living does not mean to make a life, but to be concurrent in the situation of pilgrimage. Quote, our place is in what is evolving. We must transform what is coming to be, end quote. Guardini educates us to interact with our age and give advices to discern our attitude in this battle. 
First, honestly say yes to it, to the technologies. Second, relate it to uh, um, it as to ourselves. Third, only those to whom the relationship with God gave a sense of unconditional we are capable of the kind of decision for something ultimate that is dominant in science today and it is search for truth. Nor is this true that what is taking place is not Christian. The minds and work it, in it may often be non-Christians, but the events as such are not. Fourth, to gain mastery over it, Fifth, the demand is that this essential element, simplicity and authenticity, be taken out of the, out of the hands of those who distort it into something non-human. Six, uh, the achievement of a great coming form by which the technological will be truly expressed and molded. Seventh, what we need is not less technology, but more, more human technology. Um, Guardian is not about the links between the digital and physical, old and new. On this kind of a dialectical approach is based the European Heritage Institutions. The Innovation and Cultural Heritage Conference was held in Brussels 2018. There are a few opinions about the role of the digi digitalization. One of that is to protect the heritage. Another one is rather to promote the heritage and to exchange real, real life experiences. In the conference, Carlos Moedas, ex-European Union Commissioner for the Research, Science and Innovation, currently the mayor of Lisbon, said, you cannot digitize experiences, you can digitize the artifacts, the paintings, but you cannot digitize humanity, end quote. I want to show you some examples in which we find uh, how the technologies uh, serve the community in the church building, or gradually, gradually substitute the church building. Um, how new technologies do not want to give true form, but to be imposed from outside or to substitute the true form. And as, as well to um, um, underline the new terms used uh, in this um, field. As well, in the Vatican, we have Pontifical Council for Culture uh, and the Department Digital Culture. So in the church is uh, discussed a lot of about this theme. It's not new and a lot of written about what we are talking in this conference about digitiz digitization and uh, artificial, artificial intelligence and so on. Uh, last year, on uh, July 16th, the anniversary of 18th and last apparition of the Virgin Mary, the Shrine of Lourdes hosted an exceptional air pilgrimage for the wall, wall, uh, wall world, which took place live from the grotto, grotto of the apparitions. So this is the first time then uh, used uh, this term air pilgrimage in uh, history. In Italy, we have... Um, we have uh, as a digitalization project very um, uh, very new online ecclesiastical heritage which is very useful for not specialists and uh, there's focus on selecting themes um, so we can find all cultural heritage of church in, in one platform another project churches at open Open Doors. It is an experimental project to open and visit the ecclesiastical cultural heritage of uh, Piedmont and Valle d'Aosta autonomously with the help of new technologies. It is a free downloadable app that books and allows entrance to the site, opening the door through a QR code, and um, you are guided to discover uh, the property inside through a multimedia installation consisting of historical artistic devotional narration accompanied by a system of the mobile lights and micro projects. There are many, many projects. I just want to stop uh, some of them uh, of different levels uh, of technologies. Uh, this year we finished a living pilgrimage virtual tour in Lithuanian and in English is constructed by 360 degrees. Uh, virtual tour with 3D um, models and uh, objects. 
uh, outside the shrine with a prayer as well, as well there is a possibility to have live guided tour on distance and there are two, uh, there is a written audio and registra registered information. Um, in, of course, there are many performances. Uh, this is particular performance, very important, but I don't have enough time to explain uh, how uh, on the facets of the church is used. This is Notre Dame de Paris. Uh, how video game uh, helped uh, the 3D models helped for the restoration of the uh, uh, of the Notre Dame de Paris after the fire. Uh, so this is as well um, interesting um, as um, how technology used for the cultural heritage of church. Um, another technology is um, augmented reality. With uh, this was used in the Saint Peter Church in Leuven, Belgium. So you just through an um, iPod uh, you can um, um, visit. Uh, and have augmented reality of all artworks. This kind of project was as well in the in Kona's uh, art, the Museum of Art, the, uh, art, art uh, Diotesi of Kona's, uh, and, uh, but in the exposition, not inside the church. Another project really interesting now in Lithuania, it is in Vilnius and called in, uh, Virtual Ramentoya or Virtual Consolation. It's a um, virtual uh, reality experience uh, in the church uh, with, uh, uh, of the Virgin Mary of Consolation, Barak, which is a part of Barak complex of Augustinian and um, um, originally located in the historic center of the Vilnius. Of Vilnius has gone through multiple construction phases, and uh, one of these uh, is uh, the period is dated to the second half of the 20th century, considering with the Soviet Union occupation of Lithuania, in the moment of a Soviet intervention caused a radical transformation of the barrack structure of the church, turning it into a warehouse. Among the most relevant interventions, we can mention the covering of elim elimination of the internal architectural decorations, the realization of concrete slabs that vertically tripartite the church, the installation of the two concrete stairwells and of the freight elevator connected to the new floors. So uh, there is um, a project virtual Ramentoya in interactive uh, virtual tour now um, allowing through Oculus visors uh, experience for knowledge and dissemination of a historical evolution of the architectural heritage. And um, of, of course, um, uh, guided by this uh, uh, father Algirdas and, um, and um, who proposed as well to create holograms of person from different types, uh, but um, Still not uh, realized this kind of uh, um, project. We can see how now with this Oculus visor, people can see the hypothesis of church, of course, because uh, now there are many research, but we don't have uh, the proof that uh, exactly these kind of details, which is in virtual experience is uh, true. It's only hypothesis, but people are having this experience. And uh, in a presentation, because last year was the International um, Scholarly Conference of in this church, and um, the, uh, the director of School of Robotics, who uh, guided this uh, project, uh, Paulus Briedis, explained the working process of the project uh, Virtual Remintoya, um, where you, we can have experience of 3D uh, 19th century of uh, church. But uh, uh, I want to make attention um, to, uh, to this uh, uh, presentation of, of this uh, director, what he said and the expression which uh, was used. For example, is the present, um, was said, there is a dream to create the virtual saint mass where it would be possible to meet our friends and to listen to the sermons together. 
Another, uh, to start dreaming of bigger things. As my colleague said, the church is the people. So we can think about how to connect those people in a hologramic way to the activities of the church and make them feel, feel like they are here. We made it possible for the characters of the past, uh, for example, the Augustinian um, monk, which is actual in this uh, moment, because we don't have uh, in Lithuania in, in Vilnius. So, uh, and how this character, uh, this Augustine monk, for example, communicate with the uh, uh, present father Algirdas. Another idea was said that uh, um, the patients uh, in the hospitals with virtual reality oculus visors can feel like they have been transported somewhere between the gray walls and have a different level res uh, respect of experience and relationship with the Kivu. So it's a um, possibility, good possibility. It's like taking part in a church activity because it gives you the same experience as life visit and community activities. And for the end, um, I'm just uh, for curiosity, it's not really uh, related with uh, cultural heritage, but with metaverse um, technology. And we have, of course, in, uh, in a Protestant church and in mega church, there is DG Soto, the, the priest of, of the church, who created virtual church and uh, um, and he believed that Christianity is virtual and God is in virtual reality. And uh, they explain that gathering more than one person. So what this, um, uh, you see with his family is um, having experience of virtual church. There is a possibility to have virtual baptism as well. And um, metaverse is a virtual reality space in which user can interact with a computer generated environment and other users so um here's um some examples and uh, thank you for attention we be, we can discuss uh, um, these examples in doing uh, discussion thank you for attention